Hi everyone and welcome back for another short series where we're covering how to do rolling dice mechanics in video games. Now there are loads of ways of accomplishing this and we're going to be showing you just one of the methods but this method is quite nice because it's very flexible and can work on lots of different types of dice including multiple sided dice other than the six so you can do up to d20 for example but also works for uh, dice that aren't just numbers they could have whatever you want on them as well. So let's jump in and take a look at how we get started on making a throwable dice. So to get started, I've gone onto Fab and got hold of this free dice here. Now, although we're using just a six-sided dice, we this method will work for any sided dice as well. Okay, it doesn't have to be a six-sided one. But for simplicity's sakes, we're going to keep it like this. Okay, so the first thing you want to make sure of is that whatever mesh you have has a physical collision mesh with it. So we can always check this by clicking on a little eyeball icon and checking a simple collision. And it's looking pretty good there. Now it has to have simple collision because we're going to be using physics and physics doesn't work with complex collision. So you need to make sure you've got this green box outline on your dice object. With that in your project, we're now going to get started on making our dice roll. So let's go ahead and create a blueprint class, actor, and we'll call it BP Dice. Going to open this up and we're going to add our dice mesh. to our actor there. Now, we want this to be physical based. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our dice component to be the root of the object. So wherever it rolls, it will roll with it. And because it's physics, we're gonna go down here to simulate physics and turn it on. If you don't see that turn uh, able to be turned on, and that's grayed out, this is mostly because it doesn't have a collision mesh on it. So make sure you go back and make sure it's got collision on it. Okay, so that's our dice there. We're gonna to go to the event graph and we're gonna do a function here called start roll. And the whole purpose of start roll is just to basically launch our dice outwards. So I'm gonna take my dice asset from my component list. And we're gonna add an impulse to it. And the impulse we're gonna do is just gonna be in a certain direction. If you're gonna be fussed by which direction, so be it, but if you can also just type in a value of like one in the X, for example, I'm just going to make it do random. So do random unit vector. And I'm going to multiply that by some floats. And the floats we're going to use here is going to be, first of all, the mass of the dice. So drag out your dice and get its mass. And we're also going to have a multiplier. And that's going to be our, basically our strength value of this start roll here. So I'm going to drag that into start roll and call that one strength. Okay. Next, we're going to make it so it has a bit of roll on it. So at the moment, it will just launch it in the air. So let's just show that first of all, actually. I'll begin play and do start roll. And put a strength here of 1000. And if I put that into the scene, And let's just tell it there. And if I simulate that, is it just goes straight. It doesn't have any roll on it. So we want it to have a bit of spin on its roll. So to do that, we're going to go into the start roll function. I'm going to add a torque to this thing. So add torque in degrees. And again, random unit vectors can be used to work out the torque here, but we're going to multiply it by strength. So multiply random unit vector. So random direction multiplied by a strength here. And I'm going to put this at, as the same strength that we've got as our input for start roll. So let's see how that behaves now. I'm just going to make it a little bit higher. Okay, so obviously you need to give it a bit more strength and power in its roll. So let's add it multiplied by its mass. Again, I want looking at it. Okay. And now let's multiply it by a strength factor. 
Let's make it by 100. You just want to keep fighting. These numbers will vary greatly based upon the size of your dice asset. Um, so just to keep experimenting with numbers until you get something that looks kind of like what you want it to do. Need more. Couple more zeros in there. I'll try and make it go down. Go down. Let's actually make sure it doesn't go down. Hold on. To make it so it doesn't go, just fling it to the floor. I'm going to take the impulse here. Let's just break this apart, actually. Get strength. Take that in. Um, let me move that along there. There we go. So it's just a little bit tidier. Um, yeah, so I want to make sure it goes always like up never go straight down and the way that we do that is we take this vector here we make it uh, sorry, break it sorry and then from this one we do make vector and the x and y are going to be the same put those in there but the z is always going to be positive so i'm going to do absolute on it and that will make sure it always goes up at least Bit more strength in that turn there. Let's do another 10 times that. That's looking a bit better. I'm going to change that one there to a three. Get three times spinning. There we go. Looking pretty good. Okay, so we've got the spin working, we've got it landing, and all good. But we need to know when it stopped rolling, though. So, the way we do that is we take the, the you can do a few ways, actually. You can do the tick event, look at the velocity of it, or you can do a hit and see how fast it's moving at the hit. Um, either way, doesn't really matter. Uh, so, let's just do it in the tick here. We can get the velocity. Yeah, and we're going to check the vector length of the velocity and we're going to see when that is less than or equal to and we'll pick a very small number like five for example you don't want it to be zero because it may be still moving a tiny bit when you want it to actually start reading the value obviously you tweak this value however you like but that's generally what you try and do okay we're going to put that in there if that's true we'll do it as i do once like that and then we're going to read the value okay and that'd be where we go here so i'm just going to make a function for this called read value and we'll just make it call it there now we don't want it to happen straight away because what this uh, tick will do it will trigger this read value straight away because it immediately isn't moving because it's a uh, not an immediate movement it takes a little uh, like a fraction of a second for it before it starts launching so we need this read value, and I'm just going to do a print string in here to say hello, to demonstrate that when I push play, it says hello straight away, not when it stops moving, which is not what we want. So what we need to do is we need to tell this tick to not do anything for the first sort of like half second, or when it's reached its apex, basically. So what we're going to do is on the start roll here, we're going to start a, um, a new event to fire off and tell it when to open up the tick. So on my event graph, on your tick, we're going to do something called a gate. And the tick's going to enter the gate and exit out. But the gate is going to only open when you call the custom event of rolled. Okay, so the start close, it won't do it until rolled has been called. And on start roll, we're going to call rolled. Now, a big thing we do here, though, is we don't want it to read it straight away because it's going to happen very, very fast, which is not what we want. What we want to happen instead is we want it to delay this a little bit. So we're going to do delay for 0.2 seconds will be just fine. And now that hello won't come up until it stops moving. There you go. 
So there you go. We've now got our dice rolling around using physics. Uh, but we have to read the value of it. So that's the bit that we're going to look at next time in the next video. And you can watch that next video right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find that video plus the project files for this project all from just $1 and $10 a month if you want the project files. If you want private training sessions and consulting and help with your projects, do consider becoming a Diamond Patron. You get a monthly session as part of your subscription. And while I'm saying thank you for your support. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.